It's really okay. just, we really just joking for real. So it's, okay, it's, okay, yeah. I never did the pack. Okay, oh, you, you know? never. Uh, no, you know, <laughs> this, this, this the new stuff to me. I got back, it. Back, you know? Introducing you to something new. Now I'm saying, Look, just got like, Instagram. Just got Instagram. <laughs> Not just, but you know, I ain't right? with the Snapchat. Yes. I ain't got to that yet. New to you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. So. And that's real talk. But how y'all mm-hmm. doing out there, world, man? It's the multi millionaire in the flesh. And y'all are tapping into a real talk situation, man. Know what I'm saying? I got I got Miss Brandy Renard here with me. You feel me? I met the lady. <laughs> I met you, what, two, three days ago? Yes. Oh, that was, yeah, yes. that was about four days ago. I just met mm-hmm. you in there. You know what I'm saying? I met her. I just went plug something up and I said, do you want to feature on this here podcast? No, I'm saying because mm-hmm. I, I feel like, like I, I tell myself all the time, I feel like I'm going worldwide, Miss Brandon. You gotta feel like that, you man. Gotta. You have to feel like that. We create in our future. Mm-hmm. We we creating stuff, and nothing. You can't drift up a mountain. Stuff just not gonna happen. Ooh, you can't yeah, drift you, up a mountain. You no, you can't. Go up you got. Mountain. You gotta climb. Huh? You, you, we, we climbing. That's we real climbing. Talk. That's real today talk. we climbing. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Real, today we climbing. Real we climbing. talk, Miss Brand. And yeah. I want you to introduce yourself to my to my fan base. Know what I'm saying. I'm Brandy Renard. I am. Um, I'm an author of um, three books so far. Four in January, and I'm a spoken word artist. Mm. You can hear some of my work on my Facebook, Instagram, Brandy Renard. Thanks, thanks, thanks. So how, how, long, how long have you been an author? Since 2020. 2020. 2020. Right, right. And so like, what, what's something that made you want to be an author for real? Like... So my, um, I, di- I didn't always want to be an author. So I would write stories for my kids and my mom and my dad. My mom and my dad passed away two months apart Mm. and it was really hard for my kids. Mm. So I would write these stories. I've I've always written and I would write these stories for my kids. um, And I wrote one story, Granny Unstoppable. Here's that book. So I wrote one story, Granny Unstoppable. And it's about a grandmother that passes away and she comes back as a superhero angel. And she saves her grandchildren for different situations that they would get in. So one day I'm in, um, I would tell my children would have a hard time falling asleep after my mom would pass, after my mom passed away. Mm -hmm. So I, I, that's why I made up Granny Unstoppable and it would help them go to sleep. So one day I'm in the kitchen and I'm cooking and my little boy walks up and he said, mama, you know, other, other children, grandmother passed away. They, they would like the story. They want to know about Granny too. So that kind of took off from there. And I'm like, okay, so we're going to let other children hear about Granny Unstoppable. And so There Ain't No Reindeer on the Bayou is, it's a story about when Santa comes to Louisiana. Mm. He comes to Louisiana and we had a horrible hurricane. He's trying to deliver, um, he's trying to deliver a doll to a little girl named Layla, but his reindeer can't run through the muck of the swamp. The little girl lives on an alligator farm. He, um... The little girl spots him and so she tells her father and her father is the alligator farmer. He goes and he retrieves Santa and they have to use the little girl magical gators to deliver gifts to all the children along the bayou. Yeah. So that's and um the little girl name is Layla and it kind of takes all she drives the sleigh. It's a whole adventure. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um yeah, that, in that's, Louisiana. That's, that's amazing. Like, yeah, and a Louisiana based artist. Like that, mm-hmm. that's real talk. So what what part of uh, Louisiana are you from? I'm from Reserve, Louisiana. Reserve, oh, all right, yes, all right. Yes, so it's you, more um, closer to New Orleans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I've been there a few times. I've been there a few times. Okay, So okay. you feel like the, the passing of your parents, do you feel like that was a strong reason why you became an author? Like, do you feel like you had to go through that to become an author? And, I, yeah. and I'm saying that because, like, without it, you probably wouldn't be here today. Yeah, exactly. I would not. Um, I, I've, like I said, writing have always been my passion, mm. but... The real passion didn't awaken in me until my parents passed right, away. Right, right, right. I didn't really need to give it my all, and that was for to help heal my children. Yeah. I didn't have to give it my all right, like right. that before. Right, but once that once they was on the line, oh, it's like I gotta heal these children. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like one night, I'm gonna tell you. Um, one night, my kids, like my mom, had just passed away, and mm. they were really, really close with my mom. Yeah. So my dad had passed away in November, and then my mom passed away um, beginning of March. So she, they were crying one night. I had three children 
um, all under the, all three and under, three children, mm. three and under, yeah. and they all were crying right, for a while. Right. And I had told my, I, I explained to them that, you know, she had passed away yeah. and my little boy, he was mad. He was like, you better go and get granny. Yeah. That's how he was telling me. And so they were all crying. I'm like, okay, she's coming back. Yeah. And I, I made a granny unstoppable. I'm yeah. like, she have golden wings. Oh, yeah. She's, oh, that, yeah, that's granny amazing. got like, superpowers. Like, dang. Yeah, that's, so that's real talk. Cause it's like sometimes we gotta go through certain things in order to bring us to this point, you yeah. know. Cause I feel like I always had this voice in me, always. Uh huh. But it, I didn't, I didn't really begin my journey until 2020. It was whenever uh -huh. the pandemic hit, so it was like I'm home alone. So I really began to learn myself. That's whenever I became a ball. But that's when I, uh -huh. I, I started the podcast. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm a motivational speaker, and it's like if it wasn't uh -huh. for the pandemic, if it wasn't for me just coming out here to college, you know what I'm saying? If I ain't go through that certain thing, I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be where I am today. You yeah, feel me? And yeah, we 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 grow, we yeah. grow. We all have to have get buried a little bit that isolation, yeah. you know. In order for God, you know, you had to be alone for God. Right, to right. Speak no to serious you. work could get done without alone time. That's yeah, what you, say. you you have to go through it, and you know, my parents are gone. I'm sorry to say right, right. they're gone, and but did that's they pass because of COVID. No, no, mm. my um, my dad had a heart attack. My yeah. mom breast cancer. Mm, right. Yeah, Dang, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, but, it's okay. That's right. God's will. Yeah, and you, you know? and you said you said writing was always a passion of yours. When did you really, really begin writing? Like before you even took it serious. When did you really, really begin it? I started writing. Um, I started writing poetry in fourth grade. Mm. Uh, it was fourth or third grade. I started writing poetry. I um, I read the poem. Um, lovely lady. Yeah. It was um, it was a prayer poem, and I read it, and it kind of just stuck with me. Yeah. And so I started writing my own poetry. And when I was a senior in high school, I had a teacher submit uh, one of my poems into a contest, and it won. Mm. And but I've always been private about it. Right, right. I've always, it's always have been something. Why, like, what, what what makes you feel like that about it? insecurity mm. you know didn't want to have that backlash of what people thought right, of right, right, yeah. you know scared of criticism yeah. so it was when i would write these stories for my kids i'm like okay that's my kids i can share yeah, it with them right, right right you know i had no problem sharing it with them and my little boy he was just like okay other people other people other children grandmother have right, passed right. so it just it just began it for you it yeah just, that it, it it took off i'm like okay so we're gonna share it oh yeah dang and, and when, yeah. before the cameras was on i was saying you said something about a tour like let me hear about that tour like you said you're going on a tour? oh yeah there ain't no reindeer on the bayou christmas tour i'm gonna um i have dates all throughout louisiana mm. and i'm gonna post the dates um, after Thanksgiving, right, right. post the dates for the tour. I'm gonna be at libraries, um, Barnes and Nobles. Oh, that's amazing! That's, um, that's amazing. I have an uh, uh, a literacy event um, in Saint John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. um, I just have a lot of dates lined right, right. up, and yeah, oh, and so there's also a song that goes along with the book that's mm -hmm. gonna be released after. Um, after thanksgiving also oh yeah that, that's what's up though for real for real so like as far as like when what you you go on tour right and then mm -hmm. what what do you what do you do like it's just like book signings or just you you are you out there and you just selling the books like well no there's going to be a showing and a reading of the book and oh. it's a sing-along for the kids also oh all right all yeah right. yeah up, it's have a christmas single that goes along it's called um uh, merry christmas y'all that goes with the book oh, also yeah. that's what's up and, and i know mm -hmm. that's real inspiring for all my listeners who want to be authors and stuff like that because yeah. me personally i'm actually in the middle of trying to write a book right now i start i started mm -hmm. probably the beginning of uh last summer but like it is i ain't gonna say it's hard for me but it's really like it's like, dang, it's a whole book I got. Because I, what I want to do, I want to do a, a daily affirmation book. So 365 pages, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm really having trouble formulating 365 pages. I made it all the way to like page, like probably like 15. So uh -huh. like for anybody who's trying to be an author right now, like what, what would you tell them? Like, or what's some helpful tips for, for young aspiring authors? Okay, don't force it. Mm. Don't force it. Don't if you force. get a line a day, that's that's it. Be quiet. Don't force it. Take your time. It's consistency. Yeah. It's consistency. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't give up. Right, right, Even right. if you say you have 15 days, okay, mm -hmm. you 
if if it take 365 every day write something yeah, right, right. every day write something yeah. and you know give your affirmations mm -hmm. every day to tell tell us what you're saying right, right, what, what, yeah. what you know yeah, tell like us how you, you feel like you said yeah. don't force it like That's be cool talk. with it you know and you feel like like your consistency with your with your books like you feel like you was real consistent with it. like you feel like you you really did what was needed to get your book completed let me tell you, I need to do this. Mm. I need to do this. I'm 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 not happy if I don't write. I, I need to wake up every morning between three and four in the morning and I need to write. Oh, I needed to hear that. I needed to hear that. That's real. Yeah, cool. it's not something that's an option now. Yeah. It's not something that I wanna do. It's something it's a need now. Yeah. It's a need. It's, it's like I'm I'm deep in it. Ain't right. there's no turning back from Man, it now. I'm that's deep. real tough. And they, they yeah. say like when when you what what they say? They say whenever you good at something, you you whenever you whenever you love something, because I'm pretty sure you love writing books. Oh, when yeah. you love something, you have no other choice but to be great at it. You know what I'm yes. saying? So it, it's an yeah. everyday thing. It's an everyday I'm gonna get one percent better at this. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you see your work progressing like from the beginning to, to oh, now? Yes. Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes, because now at first, when um, when I started off with the first one, it was therapeutic because it helped me get a lot of feelings out. Right. But it was um, I can see where I say if I go back and I look over some of my older work, I can see I can see some mistakes now easily. I can see where I could have changed something easily, right. and now it's not forced. It's a flow. It's yeah. it's like when I'm writing, it's it's flowing. Yeah. It's not just oh, let me think of this. What can go here? Let me. It comes. It yeah. automatically comes. Right, right. Like yeah. like you say, you're not forcing it. And is there a mm -hmm. is there a strong why that's that's rooting you to get up three four in the morning? I know some people they hear that and they oh no three four in the morning oh no like is there a strong why to why you getting up at three four in the morning to write? Because Lord knows I I get up five o'clock in the morning to to work out. Mm -hmm. But that that's different, right? That working out different. But you getting up in the morning to write. I don't see me getting out the bed that early. It's a feeling I get. Mm. It's a feeling. It's a feeling that I've tried to write other times of the day. I've tried um, evening. I've tried night. Mm. It's not the same feeling for yeah. me. It's it's that darkness. I need yeah. I, I I need to feel that darkness, that quietness, mm -hmm. that freshness of the yeah. day. I need that. Mm -hmm. So. Cause I, I feel the same exact way. Like with me working out tomorrow, I won't get up earlier than everybody. Cause I know y'all still sleep. I know y'all still in the bed. Like I know mm -hmm. y'all probably got two more hours on y'all alarm clock. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But I'm I'm up in the morning. It's like I love that. Like I, I truly yeah. truly love that. Like mm -hmm. yeah, it's that need for it. It's I don't even I don't need no alarm clock yeah. to wake me up. I don't need nobody to tell me okay, Brandy, get up. It's a feeling. It's like I'm up. I'm oh. I'm ready for this. That's and real tough. Yeah, it's 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 something I need. Yeah. Yeah, it's no turning back for right. me. Hi, I'm Brandy Renard. If you're looking for the perfect gift for Christmas, please pick up There Ain't No Reindeer on the Bayou. It's my Christmas story of Santa when he comes to Louisiana and he needs magical gators to deliver all throughout Louisiana. Please follow me for more information of all of my books on Brandy Renard on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you. Because it's the stories. Oh. I, I have so many of these stories. I can't publish them fast enough. It's the story. I can see these books as clear. I don't watch TV. Like, TV don't interest me at all. Mm -hmm. But I can see these books clear like day. I can see the story. I know the beginning. I know how, to, how I need you to feel about the book. I know what I want to say to draw them in. Oh. You know, it's a feeling you get. And it's like, you know. You, you, you know. You know what it is. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's what yeah, it's a feeling you can't shake it. Right, right, and I'm, yeah. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it helps a lot that you don't watch TV. You know what I'm saying? Because like, because yeah, right now, and I ain't gonna say right now, but as of as of lately, I've been on a, uh, I've been on a music fast. I've been on a music fast, so mm -hmm. really, I haven't been listening to music a lot, and so it it really did help out with the podcast because on the podcast, I'm quick on my feet. It's like I can respond to you quicker because it's like I don't have so much da -da -da in my brain all day. Yeah. You know? It's like it's what you feed yeah. it. Like you know, you you can't watch. I can't watch kill it, and then I'm gonna go to sleep and expect to have good, a good dream. dream. Right? Like no, he's like, what you feeding your brain? Yeah. You know, you gotta constantly think about that. Yeah, really. You tough, know, man. and and like a lot of stuff they have on TV is is 
It's not good. Yeah, for real. It's like, okay, you resemble your mother and father. You look like your mother and father, mm -hmm. right? Right. So if God is our creator, who should we resemble? Mm. You are meant to create. Right, right. You, that's a feeling. If you're creating something, your yeah. music, yeah. that's a feeling. You can't, you can't change yeah, that with nothing can't. else. You can't, you can't feel you're meant to create. You need that feeling. Yeah, real talk. How, yeah. long, how long has it been since you stopped uh, like watching TV and stuff like that? I never was a TV person. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's really just been like, you've really always been in tune with your thoughts. Like, yeah. Man. Yeah. That's why I can, I can see the stories. I can feel it. I know. Um, you know what's up. Yeah, I, I, I know what it needs to be. Right. I know what I need to say to make the, like, I I want to take the reader walking with me. Right. You know, like, come walk with me and I'm going to tell you a story. Yeah. And that's like what it is. You're scheming it. You're scheming it for yeah, me. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just telling you what I see. Right. That's it. Is there a specific mindset an author has to have? Like, do you feel like you have to be in this mindset to write this book? Because, like you just said, when the camera was off, like, your poetry isn't isn't for children. No, I'm no my poetry. But, but your books, that's that's for the kids. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if there's a certain. I I know my mind, mm -hmm. and I know that I know what I need to feel to write a a certain story. Like what what's the point I need to get across? So that one was written in five days. My little boy went to the bonfires. I took him to the bonfires, mm -hmm. and um, they had a reindeer on the levee yeah. and he was so upset he wanted an alligator i mean they had an alligator yeah. and he wanted a reindeer yeah. and he was so upset about it so he's like i needed to make him realize like understand and be happy about our culture yeah i needed him to understand you from louisiana right, we right. got gators down here yeah. gators running it yeah. santa cannot come with reindeer <laughs> so that's the point i needed to get across right you know with uh granny the unstoppable Granny passes away in the book. Yeah. So in the first um, series, she passes away, but I needed my children, I needed them to be okay with her death. Right. So I made the book to whereas um, that is okay because mm. this is this is inedible. You have yeah. this has to happen. So it's a band aid for children. Mm -hmm. You know, you tell people the truth, yeah. but sometimes it's like let's put a band aid on it. Let's make right. this okay for you yeah. now until. You so heal. You really understand it yeah, yeah. You need to heal from this. So right. we're gonna make this okay now. Yeah. So that's what Granny is. Granny yeah. is making it okay now. Yeah. She's gone, and you need to understand that. Right, right. But it's okay now. Man, that's real talk. Yeah. It's like every one of your stories seems to have a message behind it. Like, was that the 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 your main point? Like, yeah, because I need I need to teach my children. Right, I need right. them to understand. And I feel like that that's really gonna help with you growing them because they're still young. Like eight years old is your oldest one. <laughs> Yes. Right. So it's yes. like with them growing up, probably learning about sex or probably learning about this world. Like all you got to do yes. is get your pen and your paper and create a book. Like Granny Unstoppable gonna... too. Yeah. My um little boy was getting bullied. Mm -hmm. Uh well, it was just one incident, but he was okay from it. Yeah. But I wanted to make him understand. Well, I had one little boy that was getting teased, and I had my other little boy, he was teasing. Yeah. So with Granny the Unstoppable too. I, um, it's a story of a little boy that goes to school. He moves to a new neighborhood and he, he hasn't had friends, but he's excited about making new friends. Mm -hmm. He meets this one guy and, um, another little boy in his class and they give him, um, the little boy made a joke and mm -hmm. called him Billy Goat. Right. So I needed to make the readers and my children see that just from that one joke, that one little joke, it took off, yeah. it spiraled off. The whole school started calling him Billy Goat. Yeah. No one knew his name anymore. Right. The little boy was teased so horribly. They played a prank on him in a book um, and said him, hey. Mm -hmm. And he's in his room and he's on the verge of suicide. And that's what the book is. He's on the verge of suicide and his mind was gone. Yeah. He was he was sweating. He's panicking yeah. now. And um, that's when Granny shows up. And it's not to fight bullies because I've mm -hmm. had my children come to me and want me to go and fight a child. I wish I could fight the children right. at school and mess with my right, child. Right. I'll, For, I'll, yeah, behind my eyes, I'll, I'll, behind my eyes. But I had to make them realize, okay, we can't control people. Right. It's no matter how much you want to punch this. Now they punch you, that's, you dropping yeah, that's everything. Yeah. But 
we can't control people, but you got to control your mind. You got to right. be able to control yeah. your reaction, mm -hmm. control who you are, right. no matter what no one says about mm -hmm. you. If you know who you are, uh -oh. let it go. And that's the message that Granny right. teaches in the book, you know? Mm -hmm. She's like, control your mind, right. you know? Yeah. You know who you are. Don't mm -hmm. lose yourself behind this. Man. So the third one, I haven't released it yet, but I'm going to give you a little insight. Uh-oh, uh-oh, y'all. Uh-oh, y'all. Uh-oh, uh-oh. So my little girl, we outside in the yard. And my little girl, she got mad with me because she wanted candy. Yeah. She wanted candy, and I told her no. And so the UPS man pull up. He was going by the neighbor, mm -hmm. and um, she wanted to make me mad. She said, I'm going with him, and he going to give me candy. Uh -huh. So, okay, I fixed her. Yeah. Uh, first, I wrote a poem called um, saying, uh, you can also see that on my page. Um Children beware, monsters are real. It's about mm. pedophiles and it's oh. about taking little children. And I scared her with yeah. it. I meant to scare her mm. with it. You know, like don't play with me and right, tell me you're right. going, you're going with a stranger. Yeah. So Granny Unstoppable Three was meant to scare my children. Yeah. It is written already. I just right. have to, you know. Yeah. But um Layla is a little girl in the book that um all of the books are connected. Mm. Layla is the little girl in the book, and she has a very hard head. Her parent, um, her mother tells her not to talk to this one or not to do this one, but she's headstrong and yes. she does not listen. Layla get kidnapped in the book. Mm. So she get kidnapped and um, she's remembering what her brothers taught her about granny. Right. And I won't tell you the rest of the book. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, you you got to buy the book to get it. You got to buy the book to get it. That's real talk, book. <laughs> so do you really feel like as your children are growing, your books will grow? Or do you feel like you'll stay in this category of uh, children's books? No, I'm not going to stay in children's yeah. books because I have started on um, my novels for adults. Mm. So I'm not going to stay in, you know, I'm always going to deal with that. Yeah, but right, 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 yeah, right. it's not going to be the only thing oh, yeah, I um, do. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's what's up though. Dang. It's mm -hmm. like, yeah, with me trying to write a book, it's really inspiring to have you here because it's like, I got mm -hmm. an author on deck. I can call the author up any anytime I need some yeah. information. You know what I'm saying? And Ms. Brandon, it's like since you're a parent, mm -hmm. what's something like some information you would give a parent right now if you if you training up a child, you know what I'm saying? Like what's something that you would give a parent right now for them to for them to take home with them? Keep them off of social media. Mm -hmm. Keep them off of social media. Um, it's just one thing. With my experience with the TikTok and all that is, I didn't like the way the things my children were doing. Mm. These, these dares and um, the uh, they they they're seeing so many adults just everything is just sexualized mm. and it's like that's that's too much. So I allowed them on there for, and then when I started to notice they were changing, I took it away, mm. and now I um. I noticed that say we're at the park and say they have a child sitting out at the park with a phone, that child don't play with the rest of the children. Right, right. He he he's not moving. Yeah. He's not interacting. Anti social. Yes. Right. Yes. And also honesty. From for me, like my we we we're talking about everything. Mm -hmm. We're talking about everything. Like, no, no one's playing the game with you. No one's yeah. um you you know, we're, we're honest. And that's how it was with me. My parents were honest with me. Yeah. So that helped me out in life, you know. Right, right. It, even the difficult situations, I remember my daddy just being really honest really with honest. me. Mm. So That's really yeah. tough. And as a, as a young man, know what I'm saying, you're sitting here with a young mm -hmm. man, what's something that, that you, you could tell my young followers, know what I'm saying? Like, uh, us growing up, you know, what, what, mm -hmm. what's something that you could let us know? Something almost you could leave us out on a good note. What's something that you could let us know? All right, you don't need to party all that much, man. Create. create. Come on, now is the time. As you get out, if you just go ahead and put your head down, do what you're meant to do on earth. Do like everybody has a purpose. God right. gonna talk to you. Right. You can't have everybody, all the distractions in your ear. You can't go out partying. Every you're getting lost that way, mm -hmm. and then you'll end up further down the line wishing you had like you're doing good you know thank you thank man you, thank like do it do it like right. don't be scared anything right. that scares you okay you want to do something but you're scared to do it or you're thinking maybe you can't man do it mm -hmm. do it like and what's up what's something that you use to combat that fear because i i can't lie sometimes i'm 
I was nervous this morning. I had to I had to wipe my hands off while I shook it and my palms were sweaty. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes uh-huh. whenever whenever I get on the, in the boot to record a podcast, them 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 butterflies still be in my stomach. Like like what's something that you use, Miss Brandon, to combat your fear? Don't be afraid. I just remember what they tell you in the Bible. Don't mm. be afraid. Don't don't be scared. Like don't be scared of nothing. Mm. Everyone is human. Mm. Don't be as don't be afraid of the big crowd. Every person, the big old crowd, that's little people. That's all one. Right, right. You know, we individual. All the same. Yeah, we all the same. Like, don't be afraid. We're meant to create. We're meant to be here doing God's work. You're here for a reason, right. you know? Like, this is your time in history. Right. Do it now. Don't put it off. Don't say, oh, I, I want to do this. I want to do that. No, do it now. Yeah. And do it now, you know. This, you know, this is where your success starts. This is our time, and that's yeah, real talk, Miss yeah, Brandon. And I, I, I truly appreciate you for for being here on this podcast. Man, thank I, you for I, having I, me. I, I, I thank you for thank really you. all the information that you have given mm-hmm. us. Know what I'm saying, I, I, I feel like my followers are really going to track to this one right here. You feel me, man? <laughs> that's real talk. And, and what can what can my followers find you? Ah, uh, just type in Brandy Raynard. You know, Thanks. Instagram, Facebook, Brandy Raynard. I'm there. Thanks. Right, and that's yeah. real talking. Y'all make sure y'all go pick these books up, these children books. If y'all have children at home, what? Mm-hmm. And, and you say you're gonna be on tour real soon. So, oh yeah, yeah. Tour starts December second. December second. Y'all make December sure to lock that in, man. And like I said, I truly appreciate you, Miss Brandy Renard. You know what I'm saying? That's real talk. And I hope all y'all have a blessing, a safe rest of y'all week, man. Y'all tapped into a real talk situation here mm-hmm. on the Multi Millionaire and the Flesh podcast, and um. Peace out. (laughs) Thanks, Miss Brandon. That's real (laughs) tough.